Hello again, my friends. Yours truly, Willie James, as usual, um, standing up in support of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the soon coming King and our Lord and Savior. And tonight, um, tonight's topic and discussion is taken from the book Last Day Events by Ellen G. White, and I'm reading from page 158. It's entitled False Revivals. False Revivals. And I quote, I saw that God has honest children among the nominal Adventists and the fallen churches. And before the plague shall be poured out, ministers and people will be called out from these churches and will gladly receive the truth. Satan knows this, and before the loud cry of the third angel is given, he raises an excitement in these religious bodies that those who have rejected the truth may think that God is with them. Before the final visitation of God's judgment upon the earth, there will be among the people of the Lord such a revival of primitive godliness as has not been witnessed since apostolic times. The enemy of souls to, desires to hinder this work, and before the time for such a movement shall come, he will endeavor to prevent it by introducing a counterfeit. Yes, friend, wherever there's a genuine, there's a counterfeit. Watch for the counterfeit. The only way to know the counterfeit is to know the truth, to be able to detect the counterfeit. In those churches which he can bring under his deceptive power, he will make it appear that God's special blessing is poured out. There will be manifest what is thought to be great religious interest. There is an emotional excitement, a mingling of the true with the false, that is well adapted to mislead. Yet, none need be received. In the light of God's word, it is not difficult to determine the nature of these movements. Wherever men neglect the testimony of the Bible, wherever men neglect the testimony of the Bible, turning away from those plain soul testing truths which requires self-denial and renunciation of the world, there may be sure that God's blessing is not bestowed. Uh, in page 59, music is made a snare. Music is made a snare. It says, The things you have described as taking place in Indiana, the Lord has shown me would take place just before the close of probation. Every uncaught thing will be demonstrated. They will be shouting with drums, music and dancing. The senses of rational beings will become so confused that they cannot be trusted to make right decisions. A bedlam of noise shocks the senses and perverts that which if conducted aright might be a blessing. The powers of satanic agencies blend with the din and noise to have a carnival and this is termed the Holy Spirit working. Have mercy. Those things which have been in the past will be in the future. Satan will make music a sneer by the way in which it is conducted. Watch out, friends. Satan will make music a sneer by the way in which it is conducted. Let us give no place to strange excited exercises which really take the mind away from the deep moving of the Holy Spirit. God's work is ever characterized by calmness and dignity. Fanaticism, fanat fanaticism, false excitement, false talking in tongues, and noisy exercises have been considered gifts which God has placed in the church. Some have been deceived here. The fruits of all this have been good. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Sorry, the fruits of all this have not been good. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Fanaticism, fanaticism and noise have been considered special evidence of faith. Some are not satisfied with a meeting unless they have a powerful and happy time. They work for this and get up, get up an excitement of feelings, but the influence of such meeting is not beneficial. When the happy flight of feeling is gone, they sink lower than before the meeting because their happiness did not come from the right source. 
The most profitable meeting for spiritual advancement are those which are characterized with solemnity and deep searching of heart, each seeking to know himself and earnestly and in deep humility seeking to learn of Christ. Evil angels will appear as human beings. Satan will use every opportunity to seduce men from their allegiance to God. He and the angels who fell with him will appear on the earth as men seeking to deceive. As, as men seeking to deceive. God's angels also will appear as men and will use every means in their power to defeat the purpose of the enemy. Evil angels in the form of men will talk with those who know the truth. Evil angels in the form of men will speak with those who know the truth. They will misinterpret and misconstrue the statements of the messengers of God. Have Seventh-day Adventists forgotten the warning given in the sixth chapter of Ephesus? We are engaged in a warfare against the host of darkness unless we follow our leaders closely. Our leader closely, Satan will obtain the victory over us. Evil angels in the form of believers will work in our ranks to bring in a strong spirit of unbelief. Let none even let none even this discourage let not even this discourage you, but bring a true heart to the help of the Lord against the powers of satanic agencies. These powers of evil will assemble in our meetings not to receive a blessing, but to counterwork the influence of the Spirit of God. It is not difficult for the evil angels to represent both saints and sinners who have died and make these representatives visible to human eyes. These manifestations will be more frequent and development of a more startling character will appear as we near the close of time. It is Satan's most successful and fascinating delusion, one calculated to take hold of the sympathies of those who have laid their loved ones in the grave. Evil angels come in the form of those, who, of those loved ones and relate incidents connected with their lives and perform acts which they perform while living. In this way, they lead persons to believe that their dead friends are angels hovering over them and communicating with them. These evil angels who assume to be the deceased friends are regarded with a certain idolatry and with many their word and with many their word has greater weight than the word of God. Have mercy Jesus. Be careful friend. He, Satan, has power to bring before men the appearance of their departed friends. Satan has power to bring before us the appearance of our loved, departed loved ones. The counterfeit is perfect. The familiar look, the words, the tone are reproduced with marvelous distinctiveness. Many will be confronted by the spirits of devils, personate, personating love, beloved relatives or friends and declaring the most dangerous hearsays. These visitants will appear to our tenderest sympathies and will work miracles to sustain their pretensions. The enemy, Satan, will try to even personate Christ. The enemy is preparing to deceive the whole world by his miracle working power. He will assume to personate the angels of light, to personate Jesus Christ. If men are so easily misled now, how will they stand when Satan shall personate Christ? and work miracles. Who will be unmoved by his, by his misrepresentations? Then professing to be Christ when it is only Satan assuming the person of Christ and apparently working the works of Christ. Satan will take the field and personate Christ. He will misrepresent, misapply and pervert everything he possibly can. A power, a power from beneath is working to bring about the last great scenes in the drama. Satan coming as Christ and working with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in those who are binding themselves together in secret societies. There is a limit beyond which Satan cannot go and here he calls deception to his aid 
and counterfeits the work which he has not power actually to perform. In the last days he will appear in such a manner as to make men believe him to be Christ, come to the second time into the world. He will indeed transform himself into an angel of light. But while he will bear the appearance of Christ in every particular, so far as mere appearances goes, it will deceive none but those who, like Pharaoh, are seeking to resist the truth. May the Lord have mercy. As the crowning act in the great drama of deception, Satan himself will personate Christ. The church has long professed to look to the Savior's advent as the consummation of her hopes. Now the great deceiver will make it appear that Christ has come. In different parts of the earth, Satan will manifest himself among men as a majestic being of dazzling brightness, resembling the, the description of the Son of Man given by John in the Revelation, Revelation 1, 13-15. The glory that surrounds him is unsurpassed by anything that mortal eyes have yet beheld. The shout of triumph rings out upon the air, Christ has come, Christ has come. The people prostrate themselves in adoration before him, while he lifts up his hand and pronounces a blessing upon them as Christ blessed his disciples when he was upon the earth. His voice is soft and subdued, yet full of melody. In gentle, compassionate tones, he presents some of the same gracious, heavenly truths which the Savior uttered. He heals the disease of the people, and then, in, in his assumed character of Christ, he claims to have changed the Sabbath to Sunday, and commands all to hallow the day which he has blessed. Great Controversy, page 624. Satan will present will pretend to answer the saints prayers. Satan sees that he is about to lose his case. He cannot sweep in the, the whole world. He makes one last desperate effort to overcome the faithful by deception. He does this in personating Christ. He clothes himself with the garments of royalty which have been accurately described in the vision of John. He has power to do this. He will appear to be his deluded followers. He will appear to his deluded followers, the Christian world who received not the love of the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness, as Christ coming the second time. He proclaims himself Christ, and he is believed to be Christ, a beautiful, majestic being, clothed with majesty, and with soft voice and pleasant words, with glory unsurpassed by anything the immortal eye has yet behold. Then his deceived, deluded followers set up a shout of victory. Christ has come the second time. Christ has come. He has lifted up, lifted up his hands just as he did when he was upon the earth and blessed us. The saints look on with amazement. Will they also be, be deceived? Will they worship Satan? Angels of God are about them. A clear, firm musical voice is heard. Look up. There was one object before the praying one. The final and eternal salvation of their souls. This object was before them constantly, that immortal life was promised to those who endure to the end. Oh, how earnest and fervent had been their desires. The judgment and, the, and eternity were in view. Their eyes by faith were fixed on the blazing throne before which the white robe one were to attend. This restrained them from the indulgence of sin. One effort more and then Satan's last device is employed. He hears the unceasing cry for Christ to come, for Christ to live, to deliver them. This last strategy is to personate Christ and make them think their prayers are answered. Satan will not be permitted to counterfeit the manner of Christ's advent. Satan will come personating Jesus Christ, working mighty miracles, and men will fall down and worship him as Jesus Christ. We shall be commanded to worship this being whom the world is glory as, with glory as Christ. What shall we do? Tell them that Christ has warned us against just such a foe who is man's worst enemy, yet who claims to be God. And that when Christ shall make his appearance, it will be with power and great glory, accompanied by ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands, and that when he shall come, we shall know his voice. Oh, have mercy, Jesus.
completely Lord. Completely Lord Jesus. We continue. Satan is striving to gain every advantage. Disguised as an angel of light, he will walk the earth as a wonder worker. Worker. In beautiful language, he will present lofty sentiments. Good words will be spoken by him and good deeds performed. Christ will be personified. But at one point, there will be a marked distinction. Satan will turn the people from the law of God. Notwithstanding this, so well will he counterfeit righteousness that if it were possible, he would deceive the very elect. Crowned heads. Presidents, rulers in high places, will bow to his false theories. The sick will be healed before us. Miracles will be performed in our sights. Are we prepared for the trial which awaits us when the lying wonders of Satan shall be more fully exhibited? Men under the influence of, hope, of evil spirit will work miracles. Hear that? They will make people sick by casting their spell upon them. And will then remove the spell, leading others to say that those who were sick have been miraculous, miraculously healed. This Satan has done again and again. Wonderful scenes with which Satan will be closely connected will soon take place. God's words declare that Satan will work miracles. He will make people sick and then will suddenly remove from them his satanic power. They will then be regarded as healed. These works of of apparent healing will bring seven the Adventists to the test. Satan can, through a species of deception, perform wonders that will appear to be genuine miracles. It was this he hoped to make a test question with the Israelites at the time of their deliverance from Egypt. We must not trust the claims of men. They may, as Christ represents, profess to work miracles in healing the sick. In this marvelous when just behind them, is this marvelous when just behind them stands the great deceiver, the miracle worker, who will yet bring down fire from heaven in the sight of men. It is the lying wonders of the devil that will take the world captive, and he will cause fire to come down from heaven in the sight of men. He is to work, he is to work miracles, and this wonderful miracle working power is to sweep in the whole world. Satan will come in to deceive, if possible, the very elect. He claims to be Christ and is coming in pretending to be the great medical missionary. He will cause fire to come down from heaven in the sight of men to prove that he is God. It is stated in the word that the enemy will work through the agents who have departed from the faith. And they will seemingly work miracles even to the bringing down of fire out of heaven in the sight of men. He doth great wonders, so that he make it far come down from heaven and the earth in the sight of men, and deceive them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he has power to do. Revelation 13, 13 and 14. No, more Im no mere impostors are here foretold. Men are deceived by the miracles which Satan's agents have power to do, not which they pretend to do. Okay? May the Lord have mercy upon us. And may we prepare to stand firm and stand on the word of God. There is no need of earnest working men and women who will seek for the salvation of souls. For Satan as a powerful general has taken the field and in this last remnant of time he is working through all these conceivable methods to close the door against light that God would have come to his people. He is sweeping in the whole world into his ranks, and the few who are faithful to God's requirement are the only ones who can ever withstand him, and even these he is trying to overcome. May the Lord have mercy upon us, friend, and may we stand upon the word of God and have faith in God by the grace of Jesus Christ, and be not deceived, because the final battle will not be an easy one. You will be tested to the core. And Jesus said, only those that endure to the end shall be saved. Matthew 24 and 24, 25. Thank you.